Hello and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Luke Giever, editor of North Amer American Shale Magazine, and I'll be your moderator throughout uh, the webinar today. Uh, today's presentation will provide a lot of valuable insight into specific sector elements of the shale, oil, and gas world. Uh, for the past three years, our team's been writing about and including commentary in our coverage about the need to find and utilize more efficient operational strategies. Uh, with today's webinar, we're really happy to bring you a case study in what oil to field efficiencies really look like. Today's webinar, as you can see by the title, How Much Downtime is Improper Lubrication Costing Your Oil and Gas Production Operation, will really provide a high-level and technical examination of how existing technology is being paired with new, in this case automated, strategies to increase production and enhance safety throughout the well site and the equipment used to bring a well into existence. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping notes and allow our sponsor to say a few words. It began in 1926 when Russell Gray, a parking lot attendant in Minnesota, developed an air-powered grease gun that worked even in the coldest conditions. He and his brother Leo founded Graco on a mission to develop solutions for performing lubrication on automobiles with core values such as customer service, quality, continuous improvement, and reliability, a philosophy we live by today. Headquartered in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Graco employs thousands worldwide, manufacturing facilities and distribution centers across the globe. Graco's lubrication equipment division is where it all started. From the first air-powered grease gun to the fireball pump, and more sophisticated product solutions like fluid management and automatic lubrication systems, Graco continues to push the envelope in lubrication innovation. We provide solutions that, automize, that automate and optimize maintenance process practices in vehicle and heavy service equipment, industrial manufacturing, processing, and energy production applications. Graco's core line of lubrication equipment transfers, meters, dispenses, and monitors bulk lubricants and fuel in service shops around the world. In addition, Graco offers complete systems to automate the lubrication process, improving equipment life and reliability. We understand our customers. We build a partnership, working and striving towards new solutions, together making an impact. Guided by Graco's founding principles, engineers, designers, and technicians use rigorous processes and standards, along with cutting-edge tools, to ensure products meet customer performance and quality requirements. Graco has the dedication, expertise, and passion to consistently deliver leading technology. Thanks to our sponsor, Graco. I know uh, having the chance to look through uh, the presentations that are going to be delivered on the webinar today, uh, there's a lot of really interesting and exciting technology that's uh, helping to shape um, this, this new wave of uh, operational expertise in the shale field. So we're excited about that. Now to the housekeeping notes. Today's webinar is being recorded. It'll be available for viewing in the coming days. Uh, to ask a question, please use the drop-down box on your webinar screen and type your question there. We are going to hold all the questions until the end of the presentation, so if you have a question for any of the uh, presenters specifically, uh, you can type that into the question box on your screen, and we will uh, address those at the end of the webinar. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce our speakers all at the beginning first and then hand it over to Andrew. Uh, Andrew Gerluck is the Worldwide Product Marketing Manager at Graco. Also joining him today, we have Ryan Holman, also with Graco, and he is an account manager working in the oil and gas sector based out of Dallas. And Barry Chubb is a mobile hydraulic specialist for Applied Energy Company. Thank you to all our presenters. Andrew, please start your remarks. Thank you, Luke. So I'm going to dive right into... Why auto lubrication and why Graco? So first off, why auto lube? To assure that the job gets done right, 
you know, we always say here at Graco, we want to give you just the right amount of lubrication at the right time every time. You're not going to miss any points uh, if you have an automatic lubrication system on your piece of equipment. And if it's a rainy day, your equipment will still get lubed and it'll get the right amount at the right time every time. You can avoid costly repairs of premature failures. The majority of bearing failures are lubrication related. You know, whether that's over or under lubricating or incorrect lubricant or even getting contamination in your lubricant, by having auto lube, you can avoid those costly uh, repairs from premature failures. You can keep equipment running smoothly, you know, avoid downtime and avoid those costly unplanned repairs. You know, when you have your equipment up and running, you want to keep that equipment running. You don't want to be down. You want to maximize production time and reduce spare part costs uh, by using automatic lubrication. You can provide a safer work environment. You know, with an auto lube system, you don't need to climb around the piece of equipment to find those grease zerks and lubricate the bearing points or the lube points. You can also avoid inaccessible areas uh, by having an auto lube system. So whether that be gases, exhaust, confined spaces, um, or most of the time in this case, you know, rotating and actuating equipment um, where humans cannot actually be close to the equipment while it is, while it is running. You can control the dispensers with accuracy. So when a human goes out and they lubricate a lube point, they don't always lubricate with the, with the correct amount. So you can see here in this picture, you can see a bearing that's obviously over lubricated. By having an auto loop system, you can, you can dial in each loop point to this specific amount of grease that's supposed to go into that loop point so you can avoid that, uh, that A, costly, uh, you know, over lubricating event, and also you won't have any spills so it is environmentally friendly. You can also increase, increase productivity. So you can lubricate while the machine is operating. You don't need to shut the machine down early. So there's many cases, even in our own factory up here, where we put auto lube onto pieces of equipment and we've saved a half an hour a day of what we would call, I guess, downtime to have the machine down to lubricate it. We now can run production on that machine for an extra half an hour a day. So the ROI on an auto lube system is pretty quick. So now on to why Graco. So Graco, as you heard during the uh, during the commercial at the beginning, has been around since 1926. So we are not a company that's new to the industry. Uh, we've been around for a long time. We're we're a large, stable company, um, and we are a worldwide leader in fluid handling systems and components, and not just oil and grease, but many other fluids uh, that are out there. Um, you know, Graco started, was started by developing products that solve end user needs, and that is a philosophy that we continue to live by today. You know, we're dedicated and focused on driving mutual success uh, with our customers. Um, so we, we want to work with our customers to develop that solution to a difficult problem. We have a very strong commitment to new products. You can see here in this graph, Graco puts about $60 million or 4.1% of our revenue right back and into new product development. When you compare that to our peers in the same industry, uh, we're more than tw we put more than twice as much uh, into new product development. Um, and and it's, it's something that, it's a philosophy that we've lived by and it's served us very well that, that we're gonna continue to push the envelope and come out with new and better products. So putting investment and in technology to work, um, you know, we're continually investing in our factories. Um, we put millions of dollars back into our, fit, in our, into our factories every year um, to improve quality uh, and efficiency. You know, we have precision machining, assembly and testing. We are ISO 9001 and ISO 14001 certified. Um, we have quality and we're very quality and delivery focused. We wanna make sure that you get your product on time when we say you're going to get it and quickly and then also that when you pull that product out of the box that it works every time and then we have a rigorous continuous improvement program here as well 
you know, I mentioned quality, you know, quality in everything that we do. Um, you know, we have a comprehensive focus on being the best. So we have rigorous product development standards, you know, stringent manufacturing processes and control processes, knowledgeable and accessible support staff. You know, we even have a tech assistance group who is, is in our building and available to talk every single day. Um, and you call and you get a real live person. If you send in an email, you'll get a response within 24 hours. You know, we have customer care after the sale. We don't just want to sell you our product and then beyond down the road. We're, we're there for the long haul. And then a culture of continuous improvement. So it really is a cultural thing, and, and we do have that here at Graco. You know, a comprehensive focus on being the best. So you see there, A-plus customer service to every customer every time. That is a philosophy that we live by on a daily basis here at Graco. And then we are a global supplier. So obviously most of the folks maybe on this webinar um, are from North America, but if you do have operations throughout the world, we are able to very easily service those, those operations. Um, we have headquartered offices around the world. And you can see there our, head, our headquarter offices are in Shanghai, China, Seoul, South Korea, uh, Yokohama, Japan, Masmechlin, Belgium, and Montevideo, Uruguay. So we really are spread out around the world. We are a global company and we take pride in that. So manual lube versus automatic lube. You can see here in this graph at the top of the page that with over lubrication, you end up getting excessive heat buildup, wasted lubricant, and, and you have unnecessary labor costs. And if you under lubricate, you, know, you have more component wear, higher energy usage, and increased operating costs. The goal is to have optimal lubrication. So like I said earlier, that's the right amount of lube at the right time every time. If you can stay within that band, your, your bearing point is going to have significant, a significantly longer life. And then the, the graphs here at the bottom show real, a real quick depiction of manual lube versus automatic lube. And you can see when you're manually lubing, that pivot point is, is stopped. And so you lube and you put lube in that one area Whereas if you're lubricating well, the machine is operating, that pivot joint there or pivot point is going to be rotating and so you get lube all the way around instead of just in one spot. One thing I want to cover from a high level with automatic lubrication are the basic components. I think a lot of times people think that automatic lubrication is complicated or that there's black magic to it. Um, but really, in my opinion, it's, it's really quite simple. There's four basic components. The first is the controller, whether that be internal or external. You know, and what does the controller do? It controls the system and provides feedback. Okay? And there's the pump. The pump physically moves the fluid to one of our metering devices, which is number three. And a metering device can either be a divider valve or an injector. So the device on the left side is a, is a divider valve and the one on the right is an injector. And the metering device meters the amount of lube that goes into each lube point. Okay. And finally, you have the accessories. So accessories include hose, tube, fittings, proximity switches, pressure switches, indicators. You know, you might want to call it all the bells and whistles that go along with an auto lube system. Um, but really, at the end of the day, it boils down to just those four simple components. And so in everything that Barry talks about today and everything that Ryan talks about today, it, all of those systems include these four basic components. So a series progressive system layout, this is a quick example. So it's a G3 pump with an internal controller, right? So you've got your controller and your pump, and then you've got your master block and your secondary block. Those are going to be your divider valves. And then you have a cycle switch which gives feedback to the pump to make sure that you're completing the loop cycles the way that you're expecting to. So that, as you can see, this includes the four basic components. And then with injectors, again, here's a G, one of our Graco G3 pumps, and it has an internal controller, so a controller, pump, the metering device in this case is the injectors, and then you have a pressure switch in order to give feedback to the pump. That was, that's what we would consider your accessory. Um, and, and so again, very 
very basic uh, concept, but, but every single loop system, controller, pump, metering device, and accessories, it's all boils down to. And to give a, a high level overview of, of, a lot, of some of the products that we have, so everybody, I guess, understands that, that we're not really a one trick pony and we've only got one pump or one controller or that type of thing. Uh, we have a whole line of pneumatic pumps, electric pumps. So a lot of the pumps that they're going to be talking about today in the in in the examples are going to be the electric pumps, whether that be the electric Dynastar, which is the first pump under electric pumps, or the next three pumps that are in there, which are our G-series pumps. Um, we have a full line of electric pumps. We have hydraulic pumps, manual pumps, mechanical pumps. If If oil or grease needs to be moved, we can move it. And then the single line parallel uh, product lines, those are the injectors. So with those products, what you do is you pressurize the line, it shoots a shot of grease or oil down the line, and then you then essentially they reset and they're ready for the next, next go around. Um, with series progressive valves, they cycle back and forth. And as they cycle back and forth, they put a predetermined amount of lube down the line to the loop point. We also have single line resistive and air over oil. Uh, type metering devices. Um, so if your application called for that, we have that as well. And then we have our line of controllers uh, there as well. So we have four different controllers that we offer. Um, a lot of times, two people will control our systems with a PLC or a controller that is in the actual piece of equipment. And then lastly, we have our accessories. So whether that be indicators or proximity switches, cycle switches, hose, tube fittings, you name it, we, we're able to deliver everything that you need for a system. We want to be your one-stop shop uh, for uh, a total auto loop system. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Barry Chubb, who is a mobile hydraulic specialist at one of our key partners and distributors down in, uh, down in Texas uh, called Applied Energy. Thanks, Andy. Um, hopefully everybody can hear me. I had to do a little change here as we lost power. So uh, with that, I'm gonna give you just a, a brief overview. I'll have to have somebody move the slides along for me. So uh, I work for a company called Applied Energy and uh, that's in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area and we cover Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. So uh, Applied Energy has been around for about 40 years, and we have a we we really specialize in lubrication, filtration. We have uh, application engineers and people on staff that can help uh, design equipment for the oil and gas industry. So a, a little bit about where we use Graco, and and how we fabricate equipment specifically for the oil and gas industry. <clears throat> The uh, the wireline industry uses uh, a downhole wellhead unit that uh, they need to have a positive grease seal on, and that pressure runs anywhere from from uh, zero to fifteen thousand psi. The cavity where the grease seal is created has to pull down the the down the hole the wire, and uh, it's counteracted with pressure created from the well. In the past, this was accomplished with uh, air-operated grease pumps, which was only somewhat effective, so customers aren't new to the new, the new concept, but needed something better. The air had a lot of problems. Um, it was problematic from a standpoint of uh, the trucks didn't have enough uh, air to service the pumps when they were running, so oftentimes they'd run out of air, which caused problems down home. A couple of years ago, Rico looked at this problem, and we uh, we worked together, and, and they came out with a a pump that was able to to run with a four to one safety factor, ten thousand psi. And the competitors in this field were limited in the hydraulics uh, in a hydro, in a, in a hydraulic operated unit to about seventy five hundred psi. So this really 
has made a difference in uh, in the application. With that four to one safety factor, they're able to to really feel comfortable with running 10,000 psi. What that's done for the industry is is been able to really um, give them more reliability as they're able to be inside the truck and the way we construct our system. They're able to dial up the pressure required to counteract the pressure coming out of the well. And this has worked really, really well. It, it It's more of an application where you you have a an equilibrium, but you want a little bit of a positive displacement on that. So it, it uh, having that grease seal and being able to counteract that has really solved the issue there. And because it's not air operated and hydraulic operated, they're very familiar with that. And that helps them to be, uh, to, to give a solution to this environment that has uh, been very, very successful. So moving on, there are several uh, applications that we have in the oil and gas industry. And the, the next one that I'm gonna kind of talk about is blenders. And for most of you, um, as Andy kind of alluded to earlier, there are two different systems that are in use on blenders. One of them is a single line parallel system. And the other one is of course, series progressive. In most of my applications, I prefer to use the, uh, the single line parallel system. The reason for this is because it gives you flexibility. Uh, oftentimes, many of our customers that have blenders can have anywhere from five to, to seven to uh, up to 24 points on some of the blenders. The, the issue that you have is many times um, if you have a C pump that's located on the, the blender, it doesn't require very much grease. And so typically we can use what I would call a, a peanut injector um, which is just a small injector and that allows us to just give a small amount of grease uh, and consistently provide that. The three main screws that are on a blender, the bottom screws are the most difficult to grease. Uh, it's a bearing that that needs a lot of grease. Uh, it has a lot of sand problems that, that are in that application. So we're able to use a GL1 in that application and it and it really fires and, and uh, is very reliable to keep sand and grit out of those bearings. Uh, we also on the pump side feature um, a protective plate that goes on those pumps which Graco developed that you can see through it so you can still see what's going on with the pump but it and enables uh, the user to really get a good grasp of what's going on with the pump. Um, there's feedback available. Uh, it's been a real uh, stalwart for the pumping industry. Uh, they come in 12, 24, um, so whatever voltage you guys are, are gonna use. Um, most, most customers typically run those pumps uh, about once an hour on the blenders. And we found it because of the single line parallel, uh, you can add or just block off a point. So it gives you a lot of flexibility on the marketplace. The next application I would uh, kind of go over is the frack pump lubrication. And in this application, both single line parallel systems and series progression systems are used. Uh, we use the single line parallel system for all the, the reasons that we've talked about before. It gives you a lot of uh, flexibility. Um, but what I really like about the injectors in the, the frack world is that it gives you a visual indication of what's going on in the system. There are many systems that are out there from our competitor standpoint. And one of the problems that is, is is realized is when you're not getting lubrication to a plunger packing, the result is 
is that you'll see smoke coming from it, and that's when it's packed, the packing's been burned up. Um, oftentimes, you don't know that you're not getting grease to that packing, and so what I've really uh, done with, with my customers is, is taught them to push a button to basically manually go through the single line parallel system and watch the injectors because they have pins that drop. So when those pins drop and then they, when the, the system uh, gets to pressure and uh, resets, those pins will come back up. And so you don't think that you've made a cycle, you know that you've made a cycle. And that's been the difference between uh, getting proper lubrication and keeping them in the green zone and, uh, and being able to see what is going on exactly in your system. Uh, there's a couple different pumps that are used in this application. Typically, um, depending on the customer and how often they want to touch the product, uh, we have 60 pound reservoirs that handle quite a bit of grease. You can typically get about a month, a month's worth of grease without having to refill on a 60 pound unit. And that's been a really a, a big advantage because a lot of customers um, have hands that are out in the field that the touching that goes on often uh, results in uh, improper, improperly setting the pump or changing the, the parameters on the pump or just having problems with refilling. And so getting something that's 60 pounds allows you to really uh, have a long time before refilling. And chances are you're gonna keep uh, contaminants out of the grease. There's also a G3 that we use that's a DMS version that I really, really like. It gives you the ability to upload a program or download a program, look at what faults are happening uh, within the system. Um, and we typically will run off of a count sequence, and that can be done on the 60-pound units as well. But typically what we want to do is we want to run off of the actual frac pump, whether it's a quintuplex or a triplex, and be able to count the rotation. And then after, let's say, a, a typical count would be 120 rotations, we want to do a grease event. And this allows, whether you're running in first gear or third gear or fifth gear, um, you're going to get more lubrication running in the higher speeds and less lubrication when you're running in lower speeds. So it's a really effective way of, of getting more grease when you need it and less grease when you don't need it. You can also do timer, and, uh, and often one of the, the real nice features on both the 60-pound controller and the, the G3 controller is that it has a backup time sequence. That really helps us. So if, if by chance the counts don't happen in a certain time frame, the pump automatically will give a grease event. So if you have a problem with your counter, then uh, you still are getting grease events. Those are the two uh, applications that are, that I've, uh, are the three applications that I use Graco products. And uh, one of the things that I, that I really like about Graco and the job that they've done for us is uh, really partnership with, uh, partnershiping with us to, to look at R&D projects. Um, one of the things that they do a really nice job of is they, they, they put a lot of their profits back into R&D. They have a lot of engineers that look at specific applications. And so when we have problems, they're able to listen to our problems and turn around in an, in a, an effective time frame come up with an, a, a solution. And uh, that's the kind of partner you want to have because when customers have problems, we want to make sure we're, we're uh, going through and, and solving those problems. With that, I'll uh, turn it over to Ryan and we'll go from there. Thanks. <clears throat> Excuse me, thanks Barry. Um, Thanks, Andy, as well, for leading us off, and I appreciate everybody taking time this afternoon to join us. I know everybody's very busy, especially in this uh, sector. Um, like, uh, like Luke said, I, I am down in Dallas and, and very much involved in our oil and gas business. Um, what I want to do is to just kind of give you a 30,000-foot view of the applications in, in well service and oil and gas in general. Um, 
and then kind of get application specific with some of our systems, some of our designs that we have, just to kind of get your minds thinking about maybe maybe where to look for, for some of these exact uh, applications we're talking about or, or similar. Um, I know Barry already has covered wireline, uh, blenders and, and frack. Um, so I will, I will include those, but just kind of hit the high notes and, and hopefully, um, jog your memories on, on a few other applications as well. Luke, I'm having a hard time moving the screen right now. Bear with me just a sec. Um, well, when the screen catches up, I guess, uh, the first thing I was gonna cover is frac pump lubrication. Again, like Barry said, just to kind of hit the high notes of the different designs um, the g3 has three pump outlets so a lot of people will actually utilize that to kind of do a pump to point system um, they'll use those three outlets to go ahead and, and especially in a triplex uh, setup then they will go straight from our pump outlet outlet to that frac pump packings and, and that series of seals so that's one method to do it uh, there's there are a lot of people that do it that way but there are both advantages and disadvantages. It's a little more costly to do it that way because you have to use three pump elements. Um, and then it's also, uh, you don't get that feedback like Barry alluded to. You don't get any feedback really doing that way until it's, it's too late. You see the packing smokings and at that point, you know, you've got to shut down and, and make that repair. So um, that is, that's one of one of many methods, but probably the I would say least utilized um, by Graco. So, okay, I think the slides are kind of catching up. So I'll uh, I'll, I'll kind of start over for a bit and just kind of touch base again. But every, I think everybody knows what we're doing with with fracturing here. Um, we're we're pumping high pressure down hole, uh, fracking that um, that shell and and releasing the hydrocarbons making it easier to flow so this is where we see probably in in uh, well service your most common application there is a lubrication system of some sort it is just a, a decision at that point of of what you want on your lubrication system so you know here is the uh, the pump to point system uh that i just mentioned and, and as i said there's three pump outlets going to your uh your three packings on this triplex pump for example um, it's simple to understand, but there, like I said, there are some cons. It's a little bit more expensive and, and difficult to, uh, to troubleshoot because of the lack of monitoring. Um, the more common method for us is a serious progressive system. And as Barry mentioned, we will most of the time use that G3 Max pump just because it gives us all the bells and whistles. We can get a lot of inputs and outputs out of that pump. Um, I, yeah. You see the uh, the divider valve set up there for a triplex, but um, you know with a very common setup, you're able to hit a quintuplex pump as well with five points. Uh, it, it's it's very easy to uh, to design because all those points are, require the the exact same amount of grease. Um, the only thing that that some people will run up against and, and elect to do a single line instead is is because troubleshooting is a little bit difficult. That divider valve on the far right of the screen. Um, kind of the, uh, the inner works are behind the scenes that you can't see. So you have to, you have to familiarize yourself with that technology to be able to, uh, to troubleshoot it. But we do have a lot of good accessories, which I will get to in a minute, uh, that will help you kind of troubleshoot. We can give you a visual indication. Uh, we can give you electronic signal to make sure this valve is cycling. And, you know, we can even tie in pressure alarms as well. So, um, the third is an injector-based or single-line parallel. Um, here you see, again, it, it's a triplex pump, so you have three injectors going to these three points. This is a hydraulic version, so this is similar to the, uh, the wireline pump that Barry spoke about earlier. We also have an electric 
Dynastar, which is, is uh, well, it's an electric 24-volt package um, that, that still employs that same large reservoir in a 60-pound, or if, if we need to go larger, we can go up to a 90-pound as well. Um, this setup is, is commonly used. It's, ex it's, it's perceived as extreme duty, you know, oil-filled tough. It's a steel reservoir. Um, again, like Barry said, the, the reservoir can last a month. Um, if, if used properly, it is a little bit, uh, a little bit more complex, potentially a little bit more expensive. Um, if, if, um, if your customer don't see the value in, in the output of the pumps and the, uh, the size of the reservoirs, then they may elect to go to the G3 instead. So here's just a, a, a kind of brief example of how we calculate this is a known calculation um, what we will do is we would take your your end users information and let them tell us hey what what piston diameter are they using what's the stroke of those pistons and our whole goal is is to give you that that film that film thickness um, and, and like Andy said earlier the right amount of lube at the right amount of time um, if you give too much you know you have you have these pistons working harder creates more heat and, and you'll see failures that way. If you don't have enough, you'll see that uh, the packing smoking um, and, and you'll have premature failures that failures that way. So the key is just to give you the right amount of lubricant at the right time. And, and this is just an example of kind of how we come up with that lube rate. We obviously can do the same thing for bearing points or whatever it may be that, that you're trying to oil or grease on your application or on your equipment. So this is this is probably the most common example. It's a Quiniplex, which I think is is probably the vast majority of what's out there working right now. Um, as I alluded to, the G3 Max with that DMS is is typically the pump package that we recommend. The pitcher there is a four liter reservoir, but we do have flexibility all the way from a two liter up to a 16 liter in this package. Um, the DMS function, as as Barry said, you can upload programs from a, a flash drive, you can download from the pump to a flash drive. It's really nice in, in this world because most of our end users don't have one Graco setup. They have 20, they have 100. I mean, these are our total frack fleets out there. So they can take a program from one pump and just easily with a couple keystrokes on that controller have everything programmed in their fleet. So it's, it's a really nice feature to have and I think kind of sets us apart from our competition. Um, with these systems, I know the picture's a little small and hard to see, but we'll typically put what I consider kind of all of our bells and whistles to give you the feedback. There is a proc switch that is on that divider valve that will send a signal back to the G3, letting you know whether that valve cycled or not. Uh, most people will take that and then take an output from the G3 and send it to their frat controls so you can see it in real time. Um, we also can put a pressure switch in the system as well. So if we get high pressure for a block line for some reason, again, we can send that signal to your controls. Um, we do release the atmospheres on the divider valve, which are, are very difficult to see, but they come out of the front of the divider valve. And again, it's, it's, it's one of those fail safes. If you have a blocked line, then you will relieve out of that particular point. So instead of shutting down the system and burning up all five of your packing, we will relieve out of the divider valve keeping four of them in, in good uh, good shape, and then you address the fifth one when you have a chance, whether you're in between a stage or you're shut down for whatever reason. So it's uh, just just some really nice features that we include, and it, it gives the end users as, as much feedback as we can, um, trying to alert you of any issues before it's too late. So again, this is, this is probably the most common application and, and well service but uh we have we have a plenty more that i'll get to here um right about now i guess well real quick there are a couple here just some installs that we've done over the years and as you can see every package is different it's custom it's, it's dependent on what the customer what you the customer end user wants um you know the middle of the screen there is is a larger reservoir a 12 liter reservoir i believe uh, on the far left, uh, that looks like a eight liter reservoir, and then you see a small four liter. So we have a lot of flexibility from size. We have a lot of flexibility from design standpoint. And, and obviously, as you can see, each truck is it's mounted differently to meet customer needs. So that's the thing is we have very similar applications, but everything tends to be a little bit custom. And, and that's what Greco's good at. 
Um, coil tubing. So this is obviously another piece of equipment that just kind of it goes in line with a well service, similar to the wire line that, that Barry discussed. But I mean, it can do a number of different things, whether it's lowering tools down hole. It also, you know, you'll you'll perforate as well with a coil tube. Um, but you have the you know several main components: the reel, the injector header skate, which is kind of what we care about, and then obviously the control cabin and, and power pack to give us the, the power needed to to work these things. Um, there's just another quick picture of, of the components that I just mentioned. And then, like I said, the injector is, is really what we're focused on. And we do a number of different systems for coil tube applications. First of all, you see the big gooseneck there. And there's usually a series of, you know, I'd say depending on the manufacturer, 16 to 24 bearings that are on that gooseneck. So we can provide a lubrication system for uh, that application. And then you have the gripper block down there or the skate. And we will do two, a number of systems on, on those as well. We will lubricate the bearings on that gripper block that are on the backside of that gripper block. Depending on the manufacturer, there's, there's uh, one key manufacturer out there that has lube for life bearings, but there's others that these are greasable bearings, so we will we will grease those. And then, as you can see, there's a very expensive chain, um, usually about four rows of chain for this uh, application. And we will also do an oil spray system to lubricate the chain on on the uh, coil tube. So it's kind of a target rich environment. There's a lot of different things we can do. And again, we're trying to remove um, somebody from doing that manually, make sure it's done properly. And then the big thing, obviously, in oil and gas is is the explosion proof nature. So uh, we will make sure that to keep your employees, um, yourself out of harm's way to get the job done. Um, we have packages already put together for these coil tube units. This one in particular is addressing the uh, the bearings on that skate. Um, as I mentioned, it's a it's a explosion proof environment. So we do use um, an air powered pump. We mount our controller in cab, so we can uh, we can get electrical power there, and it, it, it like I said, it allows us to to successfully lubricate these bearings and, and keep anybody out of harm's way. And it's being done while you're on the job. Um, you know, we can we can lubricate as those bearings are working and moving, and ideally, that's that's how you want to grease. And here's like I said, here's the kits you can purchase from Graco, just one part number and gives you everything you need. So it's a, it's a really nice solution. Wireline again, just briefly. I know I know Barry went into to detail on this, but there's a couple different things um, we can grease and, and lubricate within the wireline application. Again, it's like coil tubing. Um, we're dropping tools down hole. We're fishing tools out, or you know, oftentimes it's it's used in perforating, um, trying to get ahead of those those frack bumps and 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 stages. So. That is, that's kind of the application. The pictures um, that you'll see here, you know, this is a little bit different from what Barry talked about. So this is a smaller scale and what we're actually lubricating in this application are those bearings. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea, well, there's, there's a lot of different things with each application we cover. This is a picture of the high pressure pump that Barry discussed again, we can go up to 10,000 psi with that four to one safety factor. It, it pumps that honey oil, and it creates that positive grease seal, as Barry alluded to. And uh, you know, I don't have to go back over, but it was just, it was, uh, it was above and beyond what our competitors were able to do with a pneumatic system. Air consumption was a problem. Um, you'd also have, you know, in, in cold temperatures, especially, you would have the pump freeze because of condensation that develops. So this hydraulic model really set us above um, and set us apart from from our competition hydraulics are readily available on the equipment um, and it does a really good job it's a robust pump and all our customers have really enjoyed using it and working with it um, yeah again this is two different two different applications you know, grease injection, wireline is what we see the most, but we also will use this high pressure pump on, you know, wellhead lubrication potentially. 
um, you know, any kind of high pressure application where you need to overcome, you know, 5,000, 10,000 PSI pressure, we can, we can do it with this pump. Again, Barry mentioned, but blender applications, um, the main, you know, this, a blender is mixing all the frac fluids pump down to down well, all those, any kind of prop in sand is, is the main thing, but, uh, that's, that's its main role. And as, as Barry alluded to, you know, there's typically three main augers on these blenders and those bearings are trouble points, especially the ones on the bottom. So that's what you see that the most simplest application of the blender is, is probably six, seven, eight points, just kind of hitting these key auger um, bearings. And then depending on the customer's needs, they will potentially want to lubricate um, centrifugals on the on the uh, on the blender, or you know we've seen some that that have upwards of you know 50 lube points because they wanted to lubricate anything that moved and required grease. So we have you know we have designs already made up, and we can we can uh, hit a wide variety of of options and applications. Uh, the next couple again just go ahead when, and support the, the well service acidizers, combination pumpers. You know they're they're pumping fluids and acids down the well uh, to kind of clean out that rock formation, make flow easier. Um, it's similar application to you know the frac pump. You have a triplex pump on there that has high pressure and needs its packing seals lubricated. So that's exactly what we're doing here. Again, we have the flexibility um, to, to use a lot of different pumps and features. These are, are probably smaller and more simple, so you will see likely the, the smaller G3 pumps used in this scenario, um, less grease requirement, and um, also sometimes maybe uh, a foot, it's a smaller footprint on a piece of equipment if they don't have room. Team enter as well, um, used to, you know, case, seal off the well, so you're pumping you're pumping cement down hole and I mean, 5,000, 10,000 feet, you may have several, several layers of this. So again, on these C pumps or C, these trucks, these C pumps, they will still have those, uh, that small triplex pump on there again, where we're doing the same thing. We're lubricating, you know, a triplex pump, those packings, so similar application as I just mentioned, and, and obviously the frac pumps. Uh, other well service. So, you know, those are the main ones we probably focus on, but there's obviously, there's loop points on every piece of equipment you see out there. There's bearings, there's slides, there's uh, chain, there's whatever it may be. So uh, just to give you an idea of, of everything we do, I mean, work over rigs, sand bit, sand bins, hydration units, you know, whatever it may be, we can, whatever it may be, we can, we can find a solution to fit your needs. Again, just a couple other applications. If, if you're ever out in, in West Texas, Oklahoma, especially, obviously everybody has seen these pump jacks or artificial lift. Uh, you know, we're, they're using these to uh, put, you know, an older well that doesn't have pressure to actually push those, that oil or gas out itself. So we use this artificial lift, this lift system. Um, the main two things we're, we're lubricating here is the stuffing box. And you'll see some similar solutions out there. And then obviously there's a bearings on uh, on the pump checks as well, probably six to eight bearings depending on the manufacturer. The problem is these are in the middle of nowhere, and the people in charge of getting this done maybe oftentimes don't, or at least don't do a good job of it. I don't know if anybody's walked up to one of these and heard it squeaking or squealing. I'm sure you have, and and that's obviously improper lubrication. So what we're trying to do is is target some of these uh, markets that maybe have been overlooked for for years and years. Um, one of the great things too, like I mentioned, these are in the middle of nowhere. If, if the customer can give us power, you know, that's fine. And we can use those G3 pumps and, and uh, go ahead and set up a system that way. If it's, if it's difficult to, to dig new power lines, whatever it may be, we do have a solar setup and you'll see these a lot of times in, you know, chemical injection pumps and things like that, but we'll utilize a solar panel with the G3 to give it power. And then, and then it's, it's a, a very simple install at that point, and it doesn't require any extra um, earth moving. Another thing I, you know, just alluding to in the, the well service, the frac manifold or missile, you know, that, that sits in the, it's the bottom picture that sits in the middle of all these frac pumps. 
There are plug valves on there, usually uh, 6, 12, 18 of these. Some of them are hydraulic hydraulically actuated. Most are probably still manual at this point. Um, and the way it's done right now is you're typically, if, if it's done at all, it's done, um, you know, in between stages or in between, um, you know, moves of a frac site or, or whatever it may be. And these plug valves often can, can have high pressure. So you need a pretty high pressure pump to be able to grease those. And, and that high pressure dinosaur, which was used for the wire line, is another application here. We can use it. It's an explosion proof uh, system. It's, it's high pressure and it can pump some pretty thick oil to or grease, excuse me. So it, it really works well for that application. And then land rigs in general, I don't have a picture, but obviously they're, uh, they're everywhere. Um, it, it's a target rich environment and it's a dangerous environment. So, you know, to, to utilize a auto lube system is really beneficial to, to anybody operating any of these land rigs. I mean, whether they're grease and top drives, rotary tables, roughnecks, you know, draw works, catwalks, whatever it may be. Um, there's plenty of applications on these. And I think it's one of those that, that oftentimes has been overlooked. You know, in years past, these rigs really moved a whole, whole lot um, from one site to the next. But I think as, as technologies have advanced, directional drilling has improved that you see these rigs stay in one place and drill several holes from the same location. So it's, it's more necessity to keep these things lubricated and up and running because you're not tearing them down and moving them and lubricating at that point. So that's just another application to, uh, to think about. Um, and then just also want to touch, oh, excuse me, want to touch on offshore applications. I know right now um, it's not a very busy market for for oil and gas it, it trails the onshore usually by 12 18 months so maybe it, it's picking up but these are a couple applications that graco has been asked to help on um in the offshore market if there's anybody listening that that does have any dealings with this but jack up rigs and lift boats and uh basically it, it's a similar application on both of these we're lubricating um pinions and and gears to, to lift these boats and these huge rigs out of the water and, and up in the air. And uh, it's, it's a very, very dangerous environment. And right now it's, it's done antiquated way with, you know, somebody with a big bucket of grease and a, a mop more or less to get, uh, to get grease onto these, um, this rack and pinion set up. Um, also, you'll see on the right, the lift boat, well, both of them, you have cranes that have large, large expensive bearings that need lubrication. Um, so we can set up systems for those. There's gearboxes on all these that can require lubrication. And even a, something as simple as, you know, a fin fan um, on, on a cup on boats, for example, they, they may fail more than anything else. So we can lubricate bearings on there too. So just to give you an idea, there's, there's no one application we can do. It's, it's anything that requires oil or grease we uh we welcome all challenges and all opportunities to you know give you a custom design it's, it's what we're uh it's what we're best at and it's what we what we use to set ourselves apart from uh from our competitors and just to finally kind of wrap up um just all the resources from graco that are at your fingertips we have a really good website um and if you just go up to the search feature and kind of search what you're looking for, whether it may be a, a G3 or a Dynastar, or if you have a specific part number or market application, you can search that and it'll automate and populate with what we believe to be the most rele relevant material. Um, we also have a vast um, offerings from, from brochures and literature from, um, you know, frac selection guides, which have pre-designed systems for you make it really simple with a basically a full bill of materials um, all the way to just kind of brief overviews of, of what we do in, in well service and then finally manuals which I think may be what we do better than anybody else is, is we have a comprehensive list of manuals for all major components in a system you can you know you can see there there's a, a g3 uh, pump on the front there and I mean it may be a, a 50 page manual but it really goes into depth of all requirements, um, setting up a system, troubleshooting, what an error message may be, anything you can think of. And, and we do the same thing for all our major components. And it's really been beneficial for, 
for not only somebody working at Graco, but obviously for the end user and customers, distributors like Barry, to be able to pick up one of these manuals and, uh, you know, find what they're looking for. Um, so that's just really great resources. And as Andy mentioned as well, we got a tech assistant line that you can always call into, customer service that sits in Minneapolis. Um, it, it's just, uh, we have, we, we believe in A-plus customer service, so we give you all the resources we can at your fingertips and, and we're happy to help. So, you know, with that, I think I'm kind of wrapping up and uh, I believe I'll turn it back over to Luke and, and some potential questions. Great, thanks. Thanks for that presentation, Ryan. Uh, good to see some specifics in the pictures there of the pumps in action. Uh, Ryan, I had a question for you. We'll stick with you. Um, when you look at the, uh, whether it's West Texas or Oklahoma or, or uh, any of the areas that you're, you're focused on, what particular sort of advancements in the, the way wells are drilled and, and fracked um, now versus say five years ago has really kind of highlighted what Gray Co. can do. I mean, is it the way the, the wells are, are fracked with more stages or the longer reach laterals now and just the the uh, physical demand that puts on the equipment? What has kind of changed that's really highlighted some of, of what Gray Co. can do, Ryan? Yeah, you know, we, we've been in this market, um, you know, for a good eight years. You know, we ride the roller coaster with it. So we've we've supplied lubrication systems for the packings for, um, you know, during that entire time frame. I think, um, to answer your question, Luke, in years past, a lot of our um, end users really utilized an oil system, a very simple air over oil system that uh, that they really didn't know how much lubricant we're getting into the packings and, and whether it was successfully getting in there and whether it's too much, too little. Um, and, and all sorts of, of concerns like that. So that's why a design like Graco is able to offer, um, you know, we still can do it with oil. We, we use grease, I think, more times than not. And we're giving you a finite amount of grease. And it, it just, it's improved packing life. And again, one of the biggest things too is it's improved on your lubricant consumption, whether it's oil or whether it's grease. We know exactly how much is getting in there. There's no waste at this point. Um, and it, it's really, it's really led us to some, some great successes in, in that particular market. Great. That, that definitely makes sense. And what about Ryan, just to, to stay with you, um, you went, you, both you and Barry went through a number of features of some of the technology that Graco has, uh, automation, you know, the safety element, um, and, and like you just mentioned, maybe saving, on uh, just material costs. Is there a certain one that kind of stands out to you that, that your clients are really coming to you saying, we want a safer operating environment or we want to cut material costs or or we want, uh, you know, on those, those hard to get to places in the rural areas, we want to really make sure that those those wells are more automated. Is there one of those features that really stands out to you? Um. They're, they're all important, Luke. Um, I, I think I think you will see a lot of people with the oil and, and grease consumption savings. And, you know, it, it's tough to really put a, a figure to that until they start looking at how much they're probably wasting. Because, I, you know, oftentimes they'll tell us what kind of lube rates they have currently or whatever it may be. And, and Graco can cut that down by, you know, a tenth. Um, or maybe, I mean, if not half, we're, we're cutting it by 75% or more. So um, I think they really can recognize grease and oil savings pretty quickly. And if you're talking about some of these larger customers with, you know, a thousand plus trucks and I mean, worldwide, uh, it's, it's, it's savings of, of millions and millions of dollars. And it makes an ROI on a system like this um, relatively quick. I mean, within a couple months, I would say in, in most in most situations. Um, and then the other thing is just to make sure it's being done correct. You know, we're, we're relying on potentially a track. It's a little bit different because um, it, it requires a lubrication system, but many of the other applications that Barry and I mentioned, it's still being done manually. And when it's being done manually, you're relying on somebody uh, to do it correctly. And it doesn't always get done 
correct. We, we set these systems up, we design them knowing what we're greasing, what we're lubricating, and we put the programs together, whether it's off of RPM count, like Barry said, to make sure that, you know, if, if, some, if the piece of equipment's moving faster, it's getting more grease. If it's moving slower, it's getting less grease. Or if we would want to just go to a, a more simple on and off time, we, uh, we build those programs to give you the correct amount of grease and make sure it's getting done. And I think that's another big uh, selling point. Perfect. Andrew, question uh, came through on the R&D side that um, Graco invests in every year. And you had a great slide that, that just showed the amount of effort and investment that Graco puts towards um, new product development. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit, Andrew, um, you know, how that, that process works, uh, in particular on the oil and gas side? Yeah, so the way our new product development process works here at Graco is myself as a product marketing manager. Uh, I work with Ryan as a, a account manager out in the field and our end users to identify, I guess, what we would call unique problems or hard to solve problems. And then I come back here to our headquarters in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I work with our engineering team to figure out if there's a way that we think that we can solve it. And if there is, I put together a business case and then we actually run it through a new product development process that we have internal here to Graco and, and go through, develop the product. We do a lot of rigorous testing um, in our lab, as well as trying to get our product before we release it out into the field to, to work out any of the last kinks um, that may be in a design. And then by the time we release it for sale, everything, all, all the kinks, I would say, are worked out of it. Um, and, and it's a very high quality product that we can stand behind and be proud to sell. So that's, uh, I, I would say that that's our new product development process in a nutshell. Definitely, definitely. What about, you know, Ryan, too, mentioned um, the, the lifespan of, of Graco in the oil and gas world. And obviously, Graco, um, the brand has been around for a, for a really long time and had a, had a very successful um, time in existence. Um, what, could you, what could you say about Graco's um, sort of lifespan in the oil and gas world and, and kind of... Um, where it hopes to be uh, in the future in terms of, of serving clients or bringing new tech to the market? So I would say that, you know, we, we Graco, are still compared to the, we in the lubrication equipment division uh, compared, and in specifically, I'd say maybe the oil and gas market, um, compared to the rest of Graco, we're still, I would say, in the earlier stages of our uh, existence. You know, Graco bought a company called Lubriquip um, about 11, 12 years ago now, and that really kind of propelled us into this market. Um, and then we've continued to develop products along the way. So, you know, Graco as a whole, our goal is to continue to come out with new products um, that will serve the market, uh, that are reliable, and, and really grow our market share in this oil and gas uh, area, if you will. Um, and then Graco also invested heavily into oil and gas, um, from an injection, um, our chemical injection standpoint, um, and high pressure valves, uh, that, those type of products really invested heavily in that side of the market too over the last, I would say, five years. And so our goal is to really build up our presence in this market and become the recognized you know, global leader um, when it comes to oil and gas. Great. Well, it's exciting to see the uh, the wide array of technology you guys have. It'll, it'll be great to uh, watch as that advance and, and, and hits the market and, and to check in with Ryan and, and your team to see uh, what you've got for the new innovations um, on what seems like maybe a, a non-talked about segment of the, of the market, but it really is an area where um, you can see these efficiencies making uh, a big impact in the field. Um, again, for everyone on the call today, just wanted to say a special thanks uh, to the whole Graco team for uh, participating in the webinar and giving their expertise 
there is, again, the webinar is being recorded. Um, all the registrants um, who signed up will be able to review this and look at it later, and we'll also have this posted on our website so they can see that. I know we had a, a few questions on um, if this will be shared. Uh, if you're interested in any of the products, if you have pricing questions, I know there was some of those. Um, the best thing to do is to go to uh, Ryan or Andrew uh, offline and kind of um, talk about your specific uh, application and what you're looking for with um, any of their pumps. I know there were some questions on the G3 uh, in particular, so you can uh, reach out to Ryan or Andrew and they'll um, direct you or be able to answer your questions on there. Um, I do note uh, that the Graco has actually been working on gas compressors for a hundred years, uh, one zero zero. So they've uh, got a lot of experience in that uh, that sector as well. Um, well again, want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, just a few quick announcements here for us. Our team at uh, North American Shale will be presenting our next webinar October 17th, 2018 at 2 p.m. Central. Um, we've created a new project and product of our own um, looking at the Permian Basin and the Bach and Shale play, um, and we're putting uh, two unique reports together on that. Uh, the names might sound simple, I think, but the content, data, and input that our whole team has been working on to go into those unique packages are certainly anything but. I can tell you that from working on them. Um, you can join us in October to learn more about the reports. Excited to talk about those. With that, that will conclude our webinar for the day. Thank you for participating, and we will see you next time.